Well, Scarves, let's look then at McLaren's big weekend. They've got the Indy car, obviously, at the Indy 500, Fernando qualifying fifth. And we've got Jensen Button standing in for Fernando at Monaco alongside Stoffel Van Dorn with updates coming. And we have a 3D now, not only of the Formula One McLaren, but comparing that with the IndyCar. Talk us through okay, it. Okay, we could sort of just stop here. I mean, the first thing you can tell is that they're very different at sizes and shapes. The McLaren F1 car is much longer, much longer in the wheelbase. You um, really get a feel for the length of a Formula One car. This that, is it. I mean, you? I think it's tradition we've always amazing. remembered, as you can see from the car behind us, Indy cars are very long, very big, very heavy. Yeah. But the balance has changed now. So Formula One cars are about the same weight. Uh, they're much longer. But the thing that's different between them is that you'll notice that although we've got a longer wheelbase, that the Indy cars a much longer nose. Obviously, Indy cars then go will hit a, a very hard wall at very high speed. So the frontal impact structure is much larger on the car, but overall the car is much shorter. Equally, you see the general shape of the side pods. The McLaren has a typical F1 Coke bottle shape where mm. the bodywork slims in between the rear wheels. And the uh, Dallara made uh, Indy car uh, has very much uh, an outswept side pod. I'd be quite old fashioned in Formula One sort of aerodynamic terms, but very uh, reminiscent of the Dallara made Formula E car as well. Um, this is partly to do with preventing wheel to wheel contact. And again, that's why you have the uh, difference with the uh, fenders uh, behind the rear tires. Just going down to the McLaren F1 car, where are we at now in terms of the size, size zero rear? Um, I think, with other cars I think now, like that, the Toro Rosso, for example. I think everyone's kind of centred on something not quite as extreme as we saw with McLaren in year, and Honda in year one, um, but not as big as I think everyone has learnt from that uh, concept. But um, McLaren have gone away from that a little bit now uh, and uh, slimmed the, uh, the roll hoop area back from the car. We now start to spin the cars around. Uh, you can start to look at the frontal aero uh, and the, uh, we kind of just sort of stop about there. Um, you can see that you know, this is a, a, an Indy car set up for ovals, so you don't need much downforce. You want to be running at that 230 miles an hour. You want low drag, don't need downforce. So the wing is trimmed out to almost nothing. Uh, the wing can be adjusted. There's two little adjusters in, inside the nose. You can actually uh, adjust the wing independently left and right to very tiny uh, margins. Whereas Formula One car, always needs lots of downforce, even on the fastest of tracks, and you see this massively complex wing. Again, you can see that the, the frontal crash structure there is much shorter as well if, in comparison to the Indy car. Then, as we sort of swing around, uh, you can see Formula One tyres as well now are much larger than the uh, Indy cars uh, are running, although the Indy cars do run, run a larger diameter uh, wheel inside the tyre. Side pods, again, this is all sort of to do with the, uh, the aerodynamics and the cooling. Uh, the Indy car travelling constantly at very high speed, it's easy to get air into the radiator. So for oval races, you'll see that they blank off the side pod inlet, very small amount of air gets in, but because of the speed, you get plenty of cooling. F1 cars run much slower, and you need the cooling when you're running in the slower corners, so you have a much larger uh, side pod inlet. Um, all of the aero add-ons and the bodywork add-ons around the front of the uh, McLaren F1 car are for aerodynamic purposes. On the Indy car, the thing you, you see outboard there behind the front wheel again is to try and prevent wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. Obviously, at over 200 miles an hour, any contact between the cars, particularly tyre to bodywork or tyre to tyre, would be catastrophic. So it's important for these cars to trim Different back. mirror positions too. Indy car, but level with the steering wheel. Formula One further back or not? Is that an optical illusion? Um, no, that probably is the right. Um, Formula One teams um, move the mirrors around. M McLaren, interestingly, have probably one of the highest and sort of furthest back mirror positions of uh, most of the other teams. Everyone else plays with it a little bit. They've all got different ideas what they want to do. And, and Fernando running the same helmet as he does in Formula One in Indy. Uh, yes. Bell helmet. The only difference being that there's a lip you're allowed to have in Formula One, you're not allowed to have in Indy. You can't have the, yeah. uh, the, the spoiler on the, uh, yeah. the back of the helmet uh, in IndyCar. Here we see, obviously, refueling has gone from Formula One. Uh, in IndyCar, we, it, it's blanked off here, but they will come in and refuel through the race. Obviously, F1 cars, it's just tyre changes through the race. Uh, even the, uh, you know, the cameras over the top of the roll hoop, different. Um, you have the moving ones in, in IndyCar, which are fantastic. I think it's time they turned up in Formula One as well, so you can pan around as the cars are overtaking and lapping. Uh, swinging towards the back, obviously the power units are very different. Honda F1 engine, um, you know, it's 900 plus horsepower with the energy recovery. 
clearly not the case with um, the IndyCar engine, which is just a twin turbo. And then at the rear, again, just the sheer level of complexity uh, of the aero is apparent on the Formula One car. Formula One cars have relatively small diffusers, uh, underbody shaped tunnels. The Indy car is designed to have a much longer tunnel. Most of its downforce comes from underneath the car, so a lot of the aero is designed to work uh, that area with a Formula One car. As much as the diffuser is important, they do shape a lot of the upper body work to help that diffuser work and to play about. And again, just the rear wing levels. McLaren has this deep wing, as deep as the regulations allow it, and the coat hanger shaped T-wing. Whereas, again, on the uh, Indy cars, we see that the rear wing is trimmed right out, just one element. And we saw in qualifying, the little extra wing that sits over the uh, rear tyre fenders, they were running the uh, outboard one removed, uh, just to take that little bit of extra drag off the car, because obviously, because on an Indy car, the setup is very asymmetric in order to get the loads right across the chassis. So they're actually taking little bits off in quality just to get that last little bit of top speed and uh, you know, sacrifice a little bit of balance, a little bit of tyre control. Well, an excellent performance from Fernando to get in to the car, to get into the team, get a feel for what it's all about. He's right there, he's on the pace. It is a question of strategy now, really. It's just how he manages the race and how, how the cards fall for him.